people of God. Turn off the truck. Um, I'm currently over here in Missouri and uh, a lot of stuff has happened. Um, basically, if you, if you watch my previous Rapture video, I believe it's in my Rapture video, I talk about um, a dual fulfillment of the 73 years. Now, that was with another date, I believe, that I put on there. But this coming April 26th is even a more perfect date in the sense that it fulfills the uh, 73 years of Israel being a nation <coughs> on the prophetic calendar. Okay, well, what is a prophetic calendar? The prophetic calendar is um, basically what God goes by, what he what he views as days of years, a days in a year, which is 360. See, we didn't change it to 365 uh, until later, you know, after Christ. So, sometime then. I'm not. Don't quote me on that. But, but, but what God goes by. In dealing with Israel, if you believe Israel is the time clock, the book that we need to look at for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, <clears throat> then um, 360 days in a year is what God goes by. And um, Israel by Ben Gregorian, I think that's his name. I might be chopping it up. He was the uh, one of the Israeli, the nation of Israel's founding fathers, basically, <clears throat> that stated Israel is a nation. Now, and that happened in in uh, May fourteenth. Is it May fourteenth? Yeah, May fourteenth, nineteen forty eight. So if you go by May 14th, 1948, and um, count the number of days until the April the 26th, then I believe it is 28,260, something like that. But divide that by 360, 360 years in a day, or 300, 360 days in a year, and you come out with 73 exact years. But what is what is even more amazing is on the Gregorian calendar it is seventy two exact years. <clears throat> so that's quite telling. It's quite revealing, I should say. So maybe something will happen before then. Now a lot has happened since uh, a lot has happened in the last week. I mean. There have been protests of going back to work, getting the economy going. Um, now the government has came out with um, a uh, get back to work plan or get the country back on its feet plan, but there are stipulations in that. Uh, like, I mean, your community basically has to be on a downhill decline. And no cases reported within 14 days, some, you know, different stuff like that before you can fully open your uh, industries back up. <clears throat> and that's going to be hard to achieve for some, for some, uh, for some communities. And we all have to go by what the governor says, you know, the governor of, of our state. So we're looking at that also, and also, what is what is the deal with this Kaduri prophecy? This uh, rabbi, Jewish rabbi, who had a prophecy. You can you can look that up. Rabbi Kaduri prophecy that starts with a K. I think it's K A D U R I. And supposedly he made a prophecy. He was a he was a Jewish leader. Everybody looked up to. I mean. A Jewish rabbi and supposedly he made a prophecy long ago that 
um, he wrote in a he wrote a note, you know, it said, uh, don't open this until after one year has passed after I, after I have passed away. So they waited one year, they opened the note and then he revealed in the note that, that, uh, Yeshua, which is Jesus is the Messiah. So apparently he had a revelation. He became a believer in Christ Jesus as a Jewish rabbi. And he told the people, and I believe he converted a lot of people by doing that. I mean, once they read his note, because he was he was highly regarded uh, Jewish leader, and uh, let the people know that that you know he had a revelation, he saw the Messiah, and um, in the note he said that Yeshua is the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Praise Jesus. Well, anyway, he made a prophecy about the end times, apparently, and said that, uh, and basically what it, what it, what he was saying was, or what he wrote, now, I don't know if he gleaned this off of another rabbi or not, but, uh, apparently there was, it was predicted that there would be two Benjamins as fighting for the kingship of Israel and uh, there would come a period of time where there would be that Israel would not have a government we know that is true you know the past year and a half they haven't had a government uh, almost almost a year and a half <clears throat> and they've had three elections and no success and uh, upon the completion of that phase that Israel would not have a government upon the completion of it the prophecy says that the Messiah will reveal himself the following Sabbath and that so happens and they realize that they just formed a unity government it is now the uh, it is now the 22nd of April and just a couple of days ago, I believe it was Saturday or Sunday, or a few days ago, they they established the unity government. So, and if you go a week past that, the following Sabbath, then it would land on the 25th and 26th. The very day that Israel completes its 73rd year. And you might ask, well, what's the big deal about 73 years? Well, we have to go back to Psalms 90, 10, where Moses is praying to God and says, and says, and basically he is, I believe he is prophesying about the end times during this. And he says, our years are 70 years, 80, if by strength, and then after that we fly away <laughs> right I mean what do you mean by fly away you know uh, I believe he meant possibly the rapture of the body of Christ those that believe in the Word of God <clears throat> if you believe in the Word of God then you're a member of the body of Christ you believe in the Holy Bible both the Old Testament and the New Testament and if you're curious curious on how to believe the word the the uh, gospel of our age, the church age, is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And if you believe in that, if you believe he is the Son of God, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until redemption. And I believe the redemption, redemption day is the rapture where you will be unsealed and given a glorified body and be caught up in the air with Christ. And if you want to know about that, watch my previous videos where I talk about that. And that's basically in 1 Thessalonians 4. You can read about that, how Paul tells the Thessalonians about it, about the gathering unto Christ for the believers in Christ. And it's also in the mystery revealed to the Corinthians 
in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53. And uh, Paul tells them about the mystery. And don't forget that Jesus also told them, I believe, about this mystery in John 14. So look that up also. And uh, But a lot has happened. We're trying to get back to things, get back to normal. I mean, I believe we can go back to normal, but a lot of people think that this virus is fake. They think it's no worse than the flu, and it it is worse than the, than the flu, people. It's a SARS virus. I mean, a, the SARS virus is a lot worse than the flu, so <clears throat> my point being with that is that... Uh, if you want to get back to work, wear a freaking mask, okay? Wear a mask. Keep other people, you know, keep your cooties. Keep people, keep other people from getting infected. Because you don't know if you're infected or not within the first few days, you know. And some people are asymptomatic and show no signs. They may have a sniffle, but they'll still have the, uh, they can, they can still be contagion. So, you know, if you want your freedoms back, wear a mask. Show people, show the rest of America, show the leaders that you're responsible. I mean, with freedom comes a cost, and the cost is responsibility. If you're a free person, if you want freedom for everybody else, then you should show some responsibility and some moral judgment. And what I mean by moral judgment is to be moral is to protect those around you even from yourself you know if you don't know that you have it that you're not affected then just simply wear a mask and you can keep other people from getting infected now there are other ways of getting infected you know by picking up things that have the virus on it but Wearing a mask goes a long way because it is airborne. You know, it stays in the air for three hours. So, apparently not by breathing. But if you have a mask on, you know, it's not going to go in the air for other people to get infected. You know, especially if you sneeze or cough. <clears throat> so, be responsible. Being a free person, be responsible, be moral. And think of others. Think of yourself. Think of your family. And wear a mask, you know. It's not too much to ask. Uh, you want your freedoms back, act responsibly, act morally. I mean, that's a small price to pay for freedom, given that our soldiers, our Marines, our uh, Navy men, and even Air Force have died, you know, for those freedoms, so... I mean, they paid a high price, and so did their families. So wearing a mask is uh, not that big of a sacrifice to keep our freedoms, certainly compared to the loss or to the, uh, to the sacrifices that these uh, soldiers, Marines, and whatnot, other service members and their families have sacrificed for us. So take that into consideration. And also, having formed a government, having Israel having formed a government, now the peace plan is in effect and will move forward. And what's the deal, big deal about the peace plan? Well, I believe it divides the, divides the uh, city of Jerusalem, divides the Holy Land, which God does not want to happen. He specifically states that they have divided my land, and he does not like that. Regardless of whether you think that it will ever happen, it is in the paperwork of that peace plan. And now that peace plan is moving forward. And right after that, coincidentally, right after that, oil prices plunged negative. I think the... Uh, the first time in history that the oil prices went to zero or below, and it went below zero to negative 40-something, 40 $48 a 
below the market price. And this is something we have to watch, folks, because nations depend on the selling of oil. That's a big commodity that supports the infrastructure of many nations, the selling and the buying of oil. So... Suffice to say that a lot of nations are going to be in desperate straits to uh, get the economies back up because of this. And we all know that when um, nations are in desperate situations, oftentimes they go to war. All right. Keep that in mind especially with these oil prices in the negative and the negative decline they are there now so and there's many other things that I wanted to talk about but consider this may be a plan maybe a plan of God you know before Jesus returns I mean a lot of people are quarantined still, so you should have plenty of time in the quarantine to uh, call upon the name of the Lord. For those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's in Romans 9 and 10. You can read that. For all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's with, and it's with by, by faith man believes and is justified and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and um, the ABC's of salvation is admit you're a sinner in need of a savior believe on the redemptive work of Christ and call upon the name of the Lord and that is in Romans 9 and 10 and uh, try to be as good as person as you can in these in these times I know it's trying for everybody but um, try to walk in the spirit and uh, look at your neighbor as yourself treat your neighbor as you would want to be treated and revere God fear him for the judgments he's going to bring upon this earth but also Love him with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and strength. Because he offered us a way out through his son, Jesus Christ. And um, he sacrificed his only son, and his only son willfully gave up his own life for us. So He does love us. He does want to uh, redeem us unto him, but we must believe in his son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior as a savior of the world which John 3 16 says you know um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that through his son the world might be saved so believe on Jesus Christ I mean he fulfilled all the prophecies of the prophets that were you know four to six thousand four thousand years ago they prophesied of Jesus and he fulfilled all the prophecies they talked about while he was on earth and um, that is basically mathematically impossible for one person to do that to fulfill all those things that they said about him <clears throat> so ask him into your heart you know he's knocking at your door you know whoever I will knock he says that he will knock and if someone will answer his knock the Holy Spirit could be convicting you to believe on him and have a relationship with him <clears throat> and if he's knocking at your door open the door he says, whoever opens the door, he will come in and 
dine with them and they with him. And keep Christ in you and walk in the Spirit in these times. And uh, a lot's going on now today in this world. So we need to uh, make the right decisions. And hopefully the rapture will be soon. So if you do come to the knowledge and the love of the Lord, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then we'll be going, we'll be going with him in the clouds and we'll meet him in the air. And we'll come back with him when he judges the nations. And um, I think that's it for now. I'll have to go over some more news. And um, a lot's happened, so stay tuned and God bless people. God bless us all. God bless America in these days. Thanks.